So now our board's dried, we're ready to mosaic it. So if you've bought this as a kit set, you'll find all of the um, tiles that are provided for you. Otherwise, we will put a list of what we've used in this uh, particular one that you feel to copy it, you're more than welcome to. Okay, first of all, we're going to start by putting our little dots on. So we've got our little Smarties here. We're going to just pop these in these little points here. So there should be seven of them. So I'm putting my glue into a tray. It's just easier to brush on with a paintbrush. So I've got some beautiful white iridized, we call these Smarties, they're 12 mil. Yeah. So then we've got our little yellow antennas, we're going to place those on. Just make sure they're not hanging over the side like that, you want them to have a nice clean straight line up here. Okay, so now we've got our body. We're going to do this beautiful blue iridescent Murano. These are a 15 millimeter tile. So we're just going to shape a little bit at the top. So what I'm going to do here is just take these two little points off. Just at the top. So if you put your cutters in a slight angle, you should be able just to bite those little sharp bits off ever so slightly. So it'll be our first tile to go up about here. So I'm going to put my first two down, leaving a small gap between each one. So I've got my first two, so now I'm going to work from here back upwards, so it's basically back up this way. So I'm putting my one right down to the end here. And it's handy having a marker. You can just sort of put a line where you need to trim off. So I'm just taking those a little bit further in those points. Same thing again. It's always good to have a container in front of you to cut into, just so you don't um, lose your tile or glass everywhere. So if you're happy with that fitting in, otherwise you can always trim it a wee bit more. So I'm just gonna soften those points off gently. As you can hear, I'm just using my tool just as a grinding. It just takes away any sharp sort of ends I might have. Right, and the pen will come off when you are grouting. So once you're happy with that, we we'll stick that one down. And then we'll just arrange our tiles, which are going to be whole, up the rest of the way. So make sure your glue is not applied too thick where it's sort of oozing between the tiles when you put them down. So sort of flatten them out a wee bit. The glue we're using is just a PVA, so it's non-toxic and it does dry clear. So with your remainder tiles, just sort of evenly space them. If you need to cut one, cut one, or you might be able to fit them in perfectly. Just a little bit tight, so I'm just going to cut a small bit off. And just make sure your spaces are even. Right, so the next part we're going to do is we're going to do up here. Right up to this point. Same thing again. Apply your glue. We're using a white 10 mil opaque tile. So follow through down to where you were, to the body. So you want to start it off about there. So I find the easiest way is to hold it there, get a marker, and you want to cut that diagonally because that's where you're going to start your first one off. Take that little triangle but just be mindful there is a top and a bottom you'll probably find it's a little bit hard to see but in the light the bottom has a grainy sort of a surface the top is shiny so that's our first one and now we're going to continue with whole tiles going up small gap between each tile And 
and I usually stop about there and then I work back down to it. That way you can just space them out if you need to. Okay, so now I'm onto the last one. I've got this kind of gap that's either not quite big enough for two. So what I can do, because I have worked my way up, that's still nice and wet. So I'm just gonna adjust the gap slightly. You only need to do maybe the first three and that'll just eventually take away that bigger gap and you wouldn't even notice. There you go, perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So there's nineteen tiles down there, so that's always a good way to lay them out if you're not sure. This is going to take approximately two tiles. Just pop that one there. This one here. And now we're going to follow through with the flow down here. It should take, hopefully, about three tiles. So we're going to just double check in the smooth surface for the top. We might even cut just a little half one to snug in there. So that's just the tile. I'm going to cut it on a little bit of an angle. So I'm going to put this little cut here in it. It's not quite in half. Same thing again. That's the cut I want. It's just going to snug in there quite nicely. That's all you need. Right, and carry on with this side, which we've got a few little angle cuts to do, but we'll do I'll show you how we do those. So grab your tile, same thing again, you just want to take a little bit off the side. So that just helps to make the flow around. And then I'm going to do the one on the other side. So have a look. I want it to go here, so it's going to knock on this here. So I want to have my angle cut going that way. This takes a little bit of practice. And you can see the one that we've got here is basically that sort of cut. So all it is, it's a little bit off each side. So a bit off there. And I'm not going to do a point there, I'm going to leave a little bit at the bottom, so I've got a straight bit here. And that there, we hope, should fit in nicely into there. And that's how you get that nice flow going around, the keystone in there. Push them down, right, and we'll carry on through here. It's a little bit more angle cutting. Also, I want to make sure that we flow that line around. I'm going to do another little bit of an angle cut here. Just see how it's got this little divot here? So I'm just going to take a little bit off like that. Just helps it to sit in a bit snugger so you don't get that little divot now. So here again, I'm going to pop on this end. Sort of space them out because it's not quite enough room to put another one but get that nice space there and this one here I'm going to put whole tiles on right up to here and then we'll put like a little angle cut so stop about there and we're going to work back down to it same thing again we're coming up like that and because I need to know where to cut, I'm going to run a little pen mark here. And that should fit in quite nicely. There you go. And we might get another one and maybe a half tile. Just cut one in half. Save that the half might come in handy for somewhere else. Perfect. Do you 
straighten up. I've got this area here, same thing, pat your glue down. And I can see we're going to need to do another one of those pointy cuts. So straight away, same thing. That's the sort of cut we want. So it's a little bit off this side. So you can see it's a little bit in here and a little bit in here. You see the shape there. So it's a bit off that side and a bit off that side. And as you can see, that's going to fit in nicely. Perfect. Right, so we continue on to here. Same for what we've done here. We're going to put a little triangle cut to here, work back to there, and we've got this little space to fill in. Right, we've got this little bit here, so a little bit of glue. A bit of an angle cut. I want to sit that in there. And this is going to have to go in here, so I need to cut a little bit off this side. You'll get to work out these by eye when you've um, done a few. <laughs> so, same thing again. Right, and that is basically, without knocking everything, that is the outline of our butterfly. So what we'll continue on doing next is we are going to do this background fill for starting to coming in. Then we're going to choose, uh, we're going to go into rainbow colours here. So we're going to put a couple of lines and this just helps with the flow of the direction of the tile. So it can be really helpful. So we're going to start with uh, about halfway here. So just run some lines and these are the lines that you want to follow with your tiles with your glass. We're going to cut. It will help us to see what angles we need to cut on. So just keep the flow going around. Obviously that one's going to come back this way. This way, this way. And then one here. And it's a little bit in here and that's it. Right, so that's where we want to start. I'm going to kind of achieve all these kind of messy scraggly looks. That's just going to be the start of the wing. So back forward. We have a couple of straightish ones in there, so it's whatever goes. We're going to make all these work. I'll show you how we put them together. So angle, so angle, back the other way. Some small ones. So do a couple of those to get you started, and then what we'll do, we are going to start our first one off. Stained glass is lovely to work with, it cuts really, really nice. It's flat both sides, it adheres really well. Right, so the shape we sort of want to look for is just a small kind of a pointy one. So we'll start, this one here is quite good. By having one that goes that way, it's giving us the opportunity to, to flow around that way and to flow around that way. So that's when those sort of cuts like that are quite good. So that's a sort of good cut which gives you the opportunity to go this way and flow around that way. Right, that's our first one. and next one, so it's always good to have a pile to work from. Another angle cut one, I'm going to put that in there nicely. Now I need something that's sort of quite sharp coming around here, so just have a look at the pile we've got. This one here could possibly work, but I am going to trim a little bit off the top here, just so it fits in nicer. There we go. We should sort of start shape, uh, straightening up now, so that one there, little gap like that, so I'm going to turn one up the other way, like that, and I'm going to pop that in there. That one there I want to go there, it's going to be perfect. in this little area here is a little tiny mirror circle I think would be perfect for here. Just trim that off a little bit. Yeah, it fits 
bits and mass. Okay. So keep going around. See that's got a little bit of an angle that way, so I want to try and find one that's got an angle, which should be this one here is perfect. We might slowly go, go to a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna put this one here, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit shorter. The idea we're just going to feather out to slightly smaller ones here. Alright, perfect. So we'll carry on. This one here, the same thing. I'm going to try and find one that's like that there. So it's that kind of one that is. Let's have a look, we'll just create one. So putting it there, as you can see, I have the opportunity to go around this way and a bit more this way. So we'll pop that one down. So really play with those angles that you create. Okay, so I want you to have a look at the um, cuts. See, they're not perfect. As I said, once you grab this, it's gonna hide all these little sins, but I want them to be raggy looking. So you can see the sort of the flows I've got here. Yeah, see it's all colors. So this one's gonna be a rainbow one. As you can see, we do have a blue one and a beautiful. So there is three to choose from, or you can, yeah, if you wanna make your own, do your own colors. Careful of the feet, make sure they don't fall off. So tiles, same thing again, we are going to cut a little bit off that way and a little bit off that way so we get some more baggy sort of cuts. So just so we can uh, show you a bit clearly, just sort of cutting like a zigzag and a zigzag again. So this, all these little bits we're going to use up. So we'll do a pile of them, so a bit that way, a bit that way, and have some sort of straighter cuts in there as well, so it's just getting three out of those. straighter ones. Always keep your hand towards the end of the cutters when you're cutting, it makes it so much easier. And then again, when these are done in class, students have the tendency to do like a straight line out to here, and a straight line here, and a straight line there. We don't want to do that, we want to do it out like a fan. So I start from here, 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 don't do a straight line. And that's how we're going to kind of proceed. So it's just all going to be in this sort of direction. So having these lines, although it does look messy, it just helps to give you some guidance to sort of stick by. And then you're going to get that nice fan float instead of a straight line. So I'm just going to work from each side and I'm going to move in. That's going to help with my creating the fanned out look. Right, so any colour, we've got a Angle cut and snuggers in quite nicely here. Pop those in there. Another one in there. So I'm looking for that angle to finish up that one. Right, as you can see, you don't want to get like this sort of fan look. So now we're just putting a few uneven. So we're going to put one here. And then we'll just have one hanging out a little bit at the top. And that kind of eliminates you getting this kind of fanned out look going all the way up. All right, so now we've got a little millefoy in this little gap here. As you can see, I've got them all flowing out nicely. So now I'm going to work from this end back into it.
Let this sit aside for 24 hours to dry. So now we are going to grout, and the grout color I am going to be using is white, um, which I think will make this pop look really pretty. So I've got a small amount of white grout in this container. This is just an old takeaway container, nice and flexible, and I will cut a spatula out of the side to use as my scraper. So I'm just going to make a well in the middle. Now pouring a little bit of water at a time. Try not to get too carried away with the water because you can always add water, but you can't always try and thicken it up if you've got no grout left. So if you are mixing it, it always does pay to leave a little bit of grout left in your bag just in case you have over mixed it, you can thicken it up. Right, the consistency you want to achieve is I'm probably liking it to more like a toothpaste kind of a mix, an icing mix. So a bit more water. And just make sure that it's thoroughly mixed together. This hair is quite a good consistency, so you can see that there. It doesn't slop off my spatula. So that is a pretty good consistency. So what we'll do is we'll let that sit aside for five minutes and then we'll re-stir it. Right, ready to go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut myself a little spatula. Just going to cut those points off. Sort of rounded a little bit and that is going to be my cheap little spatula which I will apply the grout with. Okay so the idea with the grout is you're just moving it over the gaps in your project. Um, I don't really see the point of uh, caking a whole heap of grout over everywhere. It's just important to work in a little area at a time and kind of clean off as you go just so you're not left with a big pile of grout to stop piled up on top of the tires. It's just about getting the grout in the gaps is what we want to do. And usually I do wear gloves, but for this one, I've actually left my gloves at work. So um, please make sure you wear gloves. I'm gonna wash my hands straight afterwards, but it is essential. So very naughty of me. I'm just doing this one from home today. So yes, naughty. So please wear your gloves. Just glad it's white grout today, not black. So as you can see, I'm just moving it backwards and forwards. Checking that it's going to the gaps nicely, which it is. And just moving it along. So I'm not having it all caked up in a big pile like that. I'm just moving it along to the next area. Right, so we'll continue on just covering all these gaps. So now I've got the grout covered all of the gaps on the top of my mosaic. I'm going to work on the side. Now just a warning about this one, if you have bought a white butterfly kit set, our boards are laser cut, so you might notice they have a little bit of a brown edging. So this is just burnt, this is the burnt glue on here. So what you need to do when you are cleaning it off to do this last, because if you rub too hard on too hard on here the brown will come off so always clean the sides last and don't use the same cloth to go back over the top of your mosaic so what I'm going to do now clean my finger with my excess grout on top I'm just going to push it to the end make sure that all the gaps are covered Sometimes a little bit of work around these little gems, you just want to push it into the side. Just be mindful you're not going to push, uh, rub too hard on that side to bring the, the uh, brown bits on top. So I'm just pushing that to the side, making sure the gaps at the sides also are filled. So sometimes it's just giving it a little bit of a gentle massage just to get down to those little nooks and crannies. Just wiping it around gently to make sure that all the sides are filled in. So when I say all of the sides, 
is basically just these gaps in here. See these gaps here? So scoop up some grout off the side and then just pop it gently around here. All right, we're just taking off the excess grout on top of the tiles. So we've got a clean area to clean off. We don't need all that excess grout on there. I'm gonna leave that for about maybe 10 minutes just to settle, because if I start taking it off too early, it can actually pull the grout out of the gaps. Um, and by leaving it for maybe 10 minutes, or you know, you, you'll judge it by, you'll feel the grout will be a little bit drier, powdery. That way when you give it a wipe over, it'll powder off nicely, because we don't have it all caked on. Right, so we'll get a couple of rags, a couple ready. of sprinkles of water. It's not soaking wet, it's just nice and damp. I usually just put a couple of little drops on. Um, it doesn't need to be overly wet, especially if you cleaned a lot of your grout off tidy. So just a couple of <coughs> sprinkles on there just to make it glide over your mosaic nicely. But flat hand, and you're just slowly, just gently rubbing, and that's just going to take the excess grout that may be on there. Moving it around, that's all you need to do. So I'm folding it back in the other way. Check you've got no tiles buried under the grout. Looking good. So I'll pick it up and I'm going to get down those sides. I'll show you what I meant about the black coming off. So clean that off nicely to so see how dirty it is. So if you imagine wiping back over the surface of your mosaic with a dirty cloth. So just keep it for the sides. Sometimes you might need a Q-tip just to get into these little areas. All right, so now I've got a dry cloth. And I'm just going to buff the surface. See that's coming up quite nicely higher bits here and around your gems but that is looking pretty good right so I'm happy with that that is probably about as much cleaning as you need to do the more you keep cleaning you're just sort of smearing the grout around so when you're happy you've got no tiles hidden no caked up grout on there maybe a little bit just up here then what we're going to do is we're just going to put this aside for a couple of hours, I've got no grout on there, so there's not going to be any risk of the grout drying on top of the tile. I've cleaned them all off. I'm going to let it sit for a couple of hours. Then this afternoon, I'm going to get a damp cloth with warm soapy water wrung out, and I'm going to give it a good final wipe over. Then that's all you need to do. Um, with these little ones here, I think we're going to just paint these like a gold colour. And also, if you have a kit set to one of our kit sets, it will come with a, a hook and a screw. But if you have just bought the board to create your own, make sure you use a 6mm screw because that's how thick the board is.